I've had a couple of messages and comments from people just uh, wanting me to do a video on how I set my struts. So uh, I'm just gonna do a quick video showing the way that I do it. And um, it works very well for me. It always seems to be a very strong brace. I don't very, get very little movement in posts. So for me, it's very effective. But like I say, every fence is different. So um, this is the way that I do it. First of all, I cut the, uh, cut the struts with a chainsaw to shape. And then I will then plane this all down with an electronic planer. Some people can use manual planers, but I've, when I've got a big job on and I do do a lot in one hit, it's uh, a lot easier on the arms if I use a battery one. So then once you've got the shape on the end, I'll go to the post and then mark out the post. So this here is where the barb will sit, two barbs, obviously different uh, different styles of fencing if you do if you only got one barb you'll have less gap at the top but uh, each individual fence is different and each fencer leaves different size gaps for different reasons but um, this line here indicates where the top of the netting will go the top line of the netting and then I mark up between the third and the fourth line down that's where I like the strut to sit just because it's almost the perfect angle it's not too steep to create the post to lift out and it's not too low that it puts extens extensive pressure on onto the strut then and then as you can see i've marked it out you marry the marry the strut up and then just mark out the square and then the next job is to chisel it out as you can see from the previous video i've marked it out so literally all you have to do is uh cut out the square with a, with a suitable suitable chisel this is a strain right chisel fencing chisel as you can see very heavy duty built for the job and uh as, as things most things with strain right it's like i say built for the job and you know beyond strong you'd have a very very tough job to break one of these so like you say you just mark out the square where you want it and then I always find it better to make it a bit smaller so that you can always cut more out to ensure that you've got a sharp, a nice tight fit. Once you've uh, chiseled out the mortise for the strut, it should fit fairly firmly in there, but obviously there's no block the other end yet to keep it tight, so you can just take it out. That's the sort of depth that I go at. It's probably probably an inch, three parts of an inch. And um, as I say, once this block's fit at the other end, everything should fit in tightly once it's all tensioned up. Once you've got everything lined up, either using a string line or sighting it through to the first turner, you can then put your strut block in. Ideally, you'd like to use a five by three and drive it all the way home. But on this job, customers supply by customer supplied the materials so I've got a fairly hefty three to four round driven down as far as we can get it and then obviously then dig the foot of the strut in we'll show you that in a minute but keep it on an angle leaning back the the idea is the more you drive it in the tighter the strut will become up the other end strut block in all the way cut any excess that was hanging over over the top of the grass off and we've dug down and cleaned out the you know the recess for the strut to go in fit the strut in the other end use the spade to lever it lever it down in and then you can just start it with your foot you know, i tend to just use the rama packer bar just to knock it Knock it home. As you can see, it's solid in there now. There we have the finished article. It is tight, just folded the wood back in a bit there. Maybe a little bit too tight. Not the neatest one I've ever done. And dug into the grounds. There's no, nothing exposed for animals to catch themselves on. So yeah, that is how I put in a diagonal strut.